you can do it up till today. And in fact, I may even gasp and a minute or two early today to give you the opportunity. There's two representatives from Highland Software today. So uh, over in the College Center as part of Career Week. So if you get a chance, if you just want to like, if you're at all interested in the field, which I would assume that you are to some degree, right? The fact that you're here. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I, I would suggest that you just go and, and introduce yourself, talk with them, and all that. Um, you know, and see if there's anything, um, you know, get, get some information for them. I was just mentioning there's a couple folks from Highland Software in the College Center. So I would encourage you to go, folks to go between lab and, um, I'm sorry, between lecture and lab to go and, and talk with them. I think uh, it's, a, it'd be, it's a good company to get into. I know that they do some internships and uh, that's a good way to gain some experience. If you're not able to do that, there is a tour this Friday, and you can register online, and I posted a link to Angel. All right. Um, we're, going to, we're going to like kind of finish up our template just to sort of get our first version down of the template to um, prototype activity. And so I don't know how, how much I will add to it, I'm going to go back and look to see where we left off with it. Because um, we can go over um, other stuff as we progress here. The goal over the next few classes is a couple things. The big goal is to review positioning and layout with CSS. So that's where we're really going to devote our focus. But there is, we're going to take some, you know, we're going to have a few side quests uh, in here as well. <laughs> I, I've seen it, I've not gone there. Yeah. Um, we are going to uh, uh, take some side quests where we go and look at um, just some additional general things about CSS that, um, yeah, you ought to because week after next is what? Spring break, Spring break. yeah. Yeah. I never know how those tickets, everyone says it's like, you know, I, I went, I flew to Albuquerque for a dollar fifty. And like, when I go, like when I go for anything, it's like, you know, that it's like four hundred and fifty dollars, you know, from here to, you know, from here to, you know, Chicago, you know, it's like, how do, how do people get these good fares? Right, oh. <laughs> All right, here's where we left off last time with the page looking like this and we had cheese, yeah. And uh, our idea was that we were going to get the common stuff in the HTML down and make sure that we had that right. Because we want to get that right in the template so that when we clone the template, all right, we can... Um, we can clone it and, and not have to go back and change it. For example, once we start cloning this, if we decided we wanted a sixth page in our site, then um, that would require some extra work. All right? We'd have to go and add it to all the other pages as well. We're less concerned about the CSS because, again, the CSS is already in its own file. So HTML, both in terms of having the right sections and having the um, common HTML, the stuff that's the same from page to page to page. We want to have that down before we start cloning it. I'll tell you what, this is as good as any. We'll do this as our stopping point, our first stopping point. 
And so now that I have this set up, I can go in and I can copy this template over and over. Um, yeah, there, there's accessibility issues with it. There is um, search issues with it, with, with the frame. Um, there is um, the fact that it's almost like using tables for layouts. It locks you into a very specific structure and you don't have really a lot of flexibility. So just the rigidity of it and the accessibility and the indexing issues for it. Um, the one thing that Frames gives you is the ability to put common HTML in a file. All right? And that way you don't have to change the navigation from page to page. Well, like about two weeks into learning a little bit about server-side scripting, you'll learn a way around that that doesn't involve frames, and, and you'll be back to where you can uh, do that. I'm going to go in and make sure my extensions are turned on. <coughs> Okay, so I've copied over one for each page, and I can then go in, except I forgot the index page. Typically, we want to make the index page called index. What does index mean, or... Or, or, what, or what is the rationale for calling it index? The reason for, for calling it index is, is all right, if you go to a website, you know. We just pick. We pick a website, and eh, that redirected me. I didn't want to do that. Well, let's, well, let me find a site that doesn't redirect. All right. All right, we go to CNN. All right. I don't, I have not typed in the name of a web page, right? It's just CNN.com. Yet it pulled up a specific web page. How does it pull up the specific web page? How does it know to pull up that web page? Web servers are set by default to look for certain names of web pages. So, because there, yeah, there, there's going to be a million pages out on CNN's website. Which one did it know to bring up as a home page? Or if we visit this, so it looks for the page called index.html on many web servers. For many web servers, index.html is one of the names for the default home page. Yeah, yeah, and again, you can configure that in the server and all that, but if the question was, why did I name it index.html, by default, index.html is usually on the list of default um, page names. All right, so now I've gone in and I can make, I can go into each page and change the things
And I can go in. I'm not going to do all the pages here. I'm just going to do the index and the goat page. It's the only pages you need, right? And I'm changing the specific content. All right. So here's our home page. And there's our goat page. And we can go in and we can customize them. So the idea here is, is that to make six pages or five pages, it doesn't take substantially longer than to make one page, right? Most of your work goes in into finding the template. Now, surely it takes extra work to go in and, and finish up each page. But typically you're only changing one part of that page. You're changing the content area. I left the navigation the same, I left the header the same, I left the footer the same. That's by design. You want to make sure that before you start cloning the page that you have the common stuff down. Okay? Alright. So, We'll leave it at this, and for the next few examples, we're just going to deal with um, changing the CSS Yeah, really. We're just going to deal with changing the CSS. Now, remember that the way your page looks depends on two things. Number one is the browser's sort of default. And number two is the CSS code that you put in. Now, by default, stuff sort of goes into a flow. Right? In other words, if I had no CSS styling whatsoever, your pages would look like the way our pages did the first week. Where you'd have a block, a block tag, a block tag, and so on. If you had inline tags, then they would be in line with each other. So we're going to call this the flow. All right. When I talk about that it gets positioned according to the flow, this is what I mean. It gets positioned according to this. All right. Now, how do we go in and how do we change that? And how do we make it be something different? Now I'm going to go through these and we'll talk about respective advantages and disadvantages. One thing that we can do is we can use what's called absolute positioning. All right? Absolute positioning is probably the simplest to do, but it is also the least flexible. However, if you have a specific design that you want your page to look a certain way, absolutely, like many did with the CSS Zen Garden site, then sometimes absolute positioning is what you want to do. With absolute positioning, you specify, in addition to the height and width, you specify how much from the top and how much from the left. You can also specify right and bottom. All right, but typically you specify from the top and from the left. So, in my first version of this, I'm going to go into the CSS, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to add some decoration here, so I'll put a border around it. I'm going to say position absolute. And then I'm going to say top. Fifty PX left seventy five PX. 
Now, I'm not done here. I'm just doing one piece of it. I just want to do this piece and show you what the page looks like and go on from there. So if I save this and look at it, absolute positioning or fixed. All right. There it is, and it's locked down. So in other words, I resize the browser window. It's fixed, it's glued down there. All right? Absolute, you know, absolutely. No wiggle room at all. Now, we can look at this and we can say, all right, this goes right up to the end. What can add uh, a little bit of space here? We can add some padding. That will add a little bit of a gap between that. But it's glued down. All right. Now, I sort of have a mix here going on, which is kind of why it's not really meshing. All right. In general, if you're going to use fixed positioning for one thing, you're probably going to use it, or, or absolute positioning, you're probably going to use it for the other thing. So let's go to the navigation. And let's do the same sort of thing with the navigation with 600 pixels. And I'll do a left All right. I'm deliberately not going to change something I probably should change. All right. And I'm going to save it and refresh. That's weird. All right, there we go. That's what I sort of expected to see before. What's going on here? Why is this all jumbled? Right, because I gave the same dimensions or the same coordinates for the navigation as that. I said... The header absolute position, 50 pixels from the top, 75 from the left. I said the exact same thing for the nav. So it's going to appear stacked on top of each other. All right. There are times when you do sort of want to do something like that. But again, it's not particularly common. So what I would do, I want to bump that down a little bit. So we'll make maybe the top, you know, 150 <coughs> pixels. All right, so now that's on top of that. What about this stuff? Pardon me? Well, we would want to move it down. Why is it in the position that it is now? Right, because 
I have not specified a position for it. What sort of positioning does it use? It uses the flow. So, again, that's why it looks like this. If I put a position on the nav section and the header section without putting a position on the section and the header. All right, so let me review that because I don't think I had the proper camera on. All right. I put for the header an absolute, position absolute, top 50 pixel, left 75 pixel. I put for the navigation at position absolute, top 150 pixel, left 75 pixel. All right. So they appear stacked on top of each other. The other things up here overlapped. Why? Because I have not given a style to those. As such, they just appear in the flow. All right. So what I need to do is I need to go in for the section and for the footer and put something for them. So I can go in and And maybe give a top of this guy of 250 and this of 350. And we can look and see how this ends up. All right. This footer looks like it should go down even lower, so we'll make it 550. All right, and there we go. Again, I'm not going to spend tons of time. Um, you got the idea. Now, let's say I wanted to make it look like this. Where we have the navigation here, the section here, the header here, and the footer here. What would I have to change about the CSS to make that happen? Okay. All right, would I have to change the header? Would I have to change the nav? What would I have to change about the nav? Its position. Um, specifically, what about its position? Okay. Could do something along those lines. Actually, we're not going to use relative. Let's say we use absolute. How could we make it so that the nav looks like this. It's going to be oriented vertically, yeah. right, if it's... A, um, go ahead. It's already a block tag. All right. What do I want to change about this? I want to change, number one, how the list is displayed. Number two, I want it to be narrower. The position is pretty much the same. I just want it to go down this way. So what I can do is I can say, get rid of display inline, go back to block, and those get stacked that way, and then I can change the width of 
this from, let's try 100. Yep. Let's try 200. All right. Now, we still have the problem of that being overlapped. What would I want to do to make this be up here? Adjust the left and so this is 250 width and it's 75 from the left so this is roughly 275 over so if I make the left 300 pixels for good measure and I probably need to decrease the width on this and we also have to bring it up a little bit. And we, for good measure, we probably want to lift the footer up a bit. <laughs> yep, too much. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. The question that was asked is that with uh, the, 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 the big variance in size of monitors, that some monitors would be gigantic. If we were to view this web page on a gigantic monitor, it would look like a postage stamp. All right, because we made it like at its widest 600 some pixels wide. And that, that would be very narrow. We also have the problem on the other end, the fact that with phones viewing it, some of the screens are going to be smaller. That's why this is a method that, although I talk about, we don't necessarily spend tons of time all right, on this. Because the better way to do things is through, um, through um, relative sizes and relative and especially floating positions. So we talk about this, again, it's good to know this, is probably the most basic. If you're really struggling with CSS layout, this is a nice, easy way to do it, all right? But we're not going to rely on this um, to, a, to a great degree, other than going over an example. Now, one nice thing, one cool thing I can do with this, by the way, is... I can change the position of the nav from absolute to fixed and the difference is when I scroll <coughs> notice when I scroll that navigation stays in the same spot. So, I will say that I don't believe uh, position fix works on all browsers. I, I seem to think earlier versions of IE, it, it, it acts as though it's absolute. But that might not be a bad thing, all right? Because if it works as absolute, if your page is laid out that way, um, generally speaking, it's probably going to be okay. So that's a nice thing that you could do to sort of keep your navigation in the same spot, all right? In fact, let's go and, and do that. Let's go and let's make a version of this that has a navigation on the top of the page all right, and as we scroll, the navigation will remain there. So I'm going to make another copy of this.
All right. So I'm going to go in here into this guy's CSS. And I'm going to say nav. I want to have position fixed top zero pixels left zero pixels. Now, as I scroll, the navigation stays on the top of the page. Again, my page is pretty small. So, now, what could I do um, if I had a margin on this? That would keep it when it initially loaded. Excuse me. To not get the overlapping of it. So that's a neat thing that you can do um, for this as well. Notice how we're not touching the HTML. Our assumption here is that our HTML is good and there's nothing that we need to add to the site as a whole via the HTML. If there was, we'd have to go in and change each page individually. All right, which again is why we take care to make sure before we start cloning it to, um, to make sure that everything that is going to be in common all those pages um, is set. All right. Third version of this. Actually, fourth version. Remember in this version, we went and we made the navigation be here and this be here. And we did that by making a fixed layout. So this guy ain't moving, no matter what we do to resize the page. Is there a way that we can make it so that I sort of get the best of the both worlds. That is, I get the navigation here and the content here, but I still get the flexibility of like as it gets bigger, it moves and so on. Well, if there wasn't a way to do it, I just wasted a lot of time <laughs> posing the question. And if I say, nope, can't do it, sorry. All right. Now. Let's go in and we can do part of this already. I'm going to go into my CSS file and I'm going to do some of the same things I did before. Namely, I'm going to get rid of the display inline and I'm going to make the width of the nav section narrower. Oh, I also want to get rid of this centering code. All right. Now, I might want to do something like a margin. left that. Oh, 
kind of more what I wanted. All right. Now, problem is, is we don't want this down here anymore. We want this to pop up here. Now, I can't go and do an absolute position for this guy. Why not? Pardon me? Because it's going to run into it eventually, right? Because the whole page shifts and moves around. All right? So what I want to do is I want to say, I want this to be where the browser normally wants to put it, except I want it to be pushed over to the right a bit and pushed up a bit. So, this is what's called relative positioning. All right? Whenever you say relative, the question is, is relative to what? All right? In the case of relative positioning, is relative to the position that the browser wants to put it in. So in our case, we have something that looks like this. A banner, a navigation, this, and this. The browser wants to put this thing here. So, where do I want it instead? I want it pushed over a certain number of pixels from the left, and I want it to be pushed up. So I'm still going to use left and top, but I'm going to use a negative number for the top. I want it to go up, well, I don't know, let's say 300 pixels, and the left I want to get push it over 200 pixels. So let's try those things and see how it works. So the section I want to say position relative top negative 300 pixels left 200 pixels. And I'm just guessing at these numbers, so we'll see if, if they're reasonable or not. Okay. Correct the syntax and try it again. Yeah. Little too, little too much. So let's say top negative 200, left 250. All right. Getting closer. I could do. Pardon me? Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. All right. And again, we can look. Now, problem is, is running into this. All right. This isn't um, necessarily, um, let's see, let, let's get rid of the centering. That's what's really causing us the problem. So let me get rid of the centering. 
because that is what is giving us the grief. All right, so that, that's kind of what I wanted. All right, and we did that by letting the flow do most of the layout for us and just describing the one thing that we wanted to be different. All right. So what have we seen too, so far? We've seen so far, number one, not doing anything with the layout. And that went, then things get positioned according to the flow. Second thing we've seen is using absolute, all right, where we say absolute, we specify a top and a left, and it gets glued down there, all right? Third thing that we've seen is fixed, which on some browsers will glue it down there even if you scroll. It stays in the same position as you scroll up and down. And then finally we saw relative, where it takes where the flow wants to put something, if we had no positioning whatsoever and adjust it based on the top and the left that we designate. So we can push it over to the left of where the browser wants to put it. We can position it up. All right. So these are all valuable in some situations and I would ask you to sort of play around with them. Next class on Thursday, we're going to go over really um, what has become sort of the work workhorse of, uh, of positioning, and that is using the float attribute to float things in a certain direction. All right, this especially becomes um, important when we talk about mobile devices and different size monitors and so on. Any questions about this? I'll zip all these up and put them up there. Next time we'll pick up by doing the float. I w again, I would encourage everyone to register for the Highland visit this Friday, if at all possible. And I would encourage you, those that are in the main campus today, to go and visit to the folks that are in the College Center um, that are here. For Did I say Highland? I meant, um, I said Highland? Okay. I, I thought I said it wrong. But yes, go and visit the folks from Highland Software uh, that are over there in the College Center. All right. Okay. That's all I had. We'll see.